I'm a Brit. I grew up in London. Uh, I have always been driven by variety. So I, I come from a medical family and didn't see myself going into a profession where I would learn a body of knowledge and then spit it out of my 40s and 50s and 60s and make a bunch of money. I just wanted to do something that was much more variety driven. So that's been a kind of thread throughout my decision making on, on my career. And that caused me to choose economics at university because it was kind of right brain, left brain. I could have gone into developmental economics on one side. I could have gone into kind of hardcore math and game theory on the other. It's also driven the choice of my first um, job, which was in strategy consulting, which is about as broad as you can get. There's a, there's a good way and a bad way of looking at that. One was I was kind of looking for variety and looking to develop a broad base of skills. The other one is I didn't really know what I wanted to do, and I wanted to educate myself and figure it out. So I did that for a little bit. Uh, I enjoyed that tremendously, actually. Very hard work, but a lot of fun. And then uh, I, I kind of skipped on a bit. I, I was an entrepreneur at university, so I found that I had a little bit of spare time, and I started a music business. It was a, I was deeply into music, very passionate about music, and I started a nightclub business that became the biggest nightclub in Edinburgh, and we had a lot of fun, and it um, booked a lot of world-famous DJs, and uh, it funded my record-buying habit. It was really pretty serious by that, by that point in time. And so I had that background, went into strategy consulting for four years, went to business school, came out, and came out into the teeth of the first dot-com boom, so 99.9, and uh, super excited. And I, I knew I had to do something in that space, and happened to meet up with a couple of founders who were starting a music business that drew upon a lot of both my business skills and my passion. So I joined them, and I was a COO of that business and drove that business for two years, got it profitable, built up the team. I was basically in charge of the business, and the other two co-founders, one was in charge of finance, and the other one was in charge of wrangling the DJs, which is a whole skill in and of itself, as you can imagine. Um, so did that business, uh, got it profitable, had a massive learning experience, as almost all of you can relate to, I guess, and uh, then was headhunted by Time Warner out of New York to come and join Time Warner Strategy Group uh, here in New York by a former colleague. Uh, I could see that uh, my business was called Trusted DJ. It was uh, going to be successful, but not a huge hit. I was ready to do the next thing. I was excited about New York. We were just about to have our first kid. So came over with the idea of, actually, Time Warner's pitch to me was, come and join our strategy group for two years, and then we'll put you back in London. You can run Time Warner Strategy for Europe out of London. And uh, of course, you know, partly because it was the AOL Time Warner merger and partly because these things never work out like they're intended to, I'm here 13 and a half years later, very happily, because uh, I love New York, my family loves New York. Um, and my career moved from kind of strategy and technology roles into investing on behalf of Time Warner for five years and now investing on behalf of Comcast Ventures for three and a half. So I'll tell you a little bit about Comcast Ventures. Uh, as the name says on the tin, we're a strategic investor. We invest capital on behalf of Comcast and NBC and Universal. And we really, so we're a strategic investor, and we aspire to be the best source of capital for entrepreneurs on the face of the planet. And, and, and the way we do that is we think really hard about structure. And there's two pieces to that. The first piece is we try not to bring any of the baggage that can sometimes come with strategic investing groups for entrepreneurs. So no right to the first look, no right to the first refusal, not trying to advantage Comcast in any way, not trying to get a look into your IP of the business, uh, completely clean. And there's two structural elements which underpin that, which are absolutely critical. And just as a piece of advice for you guys, if you ever speak to strategic investors, to find out the answer to these two questions. The first is, are you compensated on the basis of my performance as the entrepreneur? So do you guys do better if your portfolio companies do better? That's an important answer. We do. We're paid like a VC. We're paid on the basis of carried interest. The second question is, how do you approve deals? And in Comcast Ventures, we approve deals by partner vote. So it's exactly like a traditional VC firm. And the combination of those two elements um, automatically gets rid of a lot of some of the um, hair and uh, that can come with strategic investing groups that sometimes come with kind of uh, unseen quid pro quos that, uh, that you need to ferret out if you don't get the answer to those two questions. On the positive side, we try to bring everything that is beneficial about being part of a larger company. And that can mean a range of different things. It can mean um, 
let's take an example. So if you're an ad tech company, Comcast and NBC and Universal are either the number one or number two, maybe occasionally number three, both buyer and seller of ad media in the country in any particular year. Or if you want to do something in core routing, there aren't many more powerful companies that you could partner with than Comcast. Or if you want to do something in video processing, or if you want to do something in commerce, if you want to do something that relates to TV advertising, there's an incredible set of assets that we can bring to bear on behalf of you guys as entrepreneurs to help advantage your company, either help accelerate it or help to de-risk it. So that's the, that's the big set of value. We work very hard to make sure that happens. We um, set up introductions. We try to create value on both sides, obviously. We try to create value for, uh, for the corporate entity. We really try to identify opportunities for our portfolio companies, because when they do better, we do better. The, um, the second set of things we do are much more tactical and tangible. So we, uh, we, for example, if an entrepreneur is setting up a business, we commit to get them, getting them great internet access within a week. We offer a program where they can get privileged access to discounted uh, media. Uh, we, um, we can get them buying discounts, leveraging Comcast buying power of different sets of, uh, of services they might need, like accounting services or FedEx or these kinds of services that you just need as an entrepreneur getting a business going. So um, it seems to be working. We have a great set of portfolio companies. Uh, some of the ones you may know a little bit better are uh, we're in Flipboard, we're in Vox, we're in House, we're in FanDuel, um, we're in Dollar Shave Club. And on the enterprise side, we're in companies like DocuSign and ClearSlide and Sunday Sky. Uh, typically invest between three and ten million dollars in any particular round. Stage agnostic. I'll pause there. Make sense? Great. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you.